everyone and welcome to the updated baby nest tutorial. The first ever baby nest that I've sewn was four years ago for my baby, who's not a baby anymore, and it was this one. I didn't expect so many of you to love and to recreate this tutorial. I received so many pictures of your DIY babiness over the years. I really appreciate everyone who sent me a photo or a thank you message. It was really kind and really cute to see all of your babiness. And every single one of you did such an amazing job recreating the babiness. There were also a couple of questions regarding the pattern. If you saw my first video, you know I didn't share the pattern. I actually only showed you how you can draw the pattern yourself directly onto the fabric. And I actually didn't have a pattern since I didn't make one. I also created the baby nest directly onto my fabric. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you an updated tutorial for the baby nest, including the pattern. So if you want your baby nest to turn out exactly like mine did, and if you want perfectly rounded edges and to speed up the process a little bit, since you only have to print out the pattern and place it on top of your fabric, fabric, this video is for you. This is a really in-depth tutorial on how to make your own baby nest. I hope it covers every question and if you still have something you want to ask me, you can leave it down below in the comments. To get the pattern you have to go over to my Etsy shop, it's linked down in the description box underneath this video. And if you ever bought patterns from me before, you know they are really decently priced. You can print them out yourself at home and tape them together with some washi tape. And the last topic that I want to cover in this video is actually a serious one. It is about the sudden infant death syndrome. I really recommend you research about this topic before DIYing, buying or gifting this um, babiness to someone. It's a topic everybody needs to be aware of. I will leave some information here on the screen and also a link underneath this video so you can read more about it. And as I've said in the first DIY babiness video as well, do not leave your baby unattended in this babiness. Only use it during the day when you are awake and watching your baby sleep. So the babiness is not intended for nighttime use while you are sleeping. So now that I've covered everything, hopefully, let's go ahead and make the baby nest. To create your baby nest, you will need two different colors or patterns of cotton fabric. One will be for the outside of your baby nest and one for the inside. If you want to add a removable mattress as well, you will need a third piece of cotton fabric. I recommend you buy 80 centimeters of fabric for the inner and for the outer part of your baby nest and 50 centimeters for the mattress. You can see my fabric order on the screen. Keep in mind that the fabrics that I chose were between 130 and 150 centimeters wide. You'll need between 500 and 800 grams of pillow stuffing. It really depends on the product and on how stiff you want your baby nest to be. Then you'll need some wadding to create the mattress. Mine weighs 200 grams. You also need 3 meters of cotton cord and 3 meters of bias binding. This is the one that I've used. It folds like this, but you can also make it yourself. Then you'll need a cord stopper, some pins, a cutter or your fabric scissors, and of course your threaded sewing machine. And you also need some velcro tape if you want to be able to remove the mattress from the inside of the baby nest. And last but not least, you'll need a pattern for the baby nest. First, you'll need to decide which fabric you'll want to have on the outside and which one on the inside of your baby nest. I decided to go with the printed fabric on the inside and with the brown one on the outside. And by the way, I do not recommend this fabric. Especially if you're a beginner at sewing, I recommend using a normal non-stretchy cotton fabric. This was pretty stretchy due to its texture and I know it looks nice, but it wasn't nice working with it. Fold the fabric piece that you chose to use on the outside of your baby nest in half lengthwise, place your pattern on top, pin it in place and cut it out. Now repeat with your second fabric, the fabric that you will use on the inside of your baby nest. If you're also using a patterned fabric, make sure that the direction of your pattern matches the direction of your baby nest, basically. So you don't end up with an upside down pattern on your baby nest. 
I didn't think about that when purchasing the fabric so I'll have to cut a piece of fabric and add it to the bottom of my fabric piece. So this is where I'm going to connect the pieces so I'll have a longer fabric piece to work with for my baby nest. I don't know if you can remember but I did a similar mistake on my first baby nest. <laughs> I had to add some fabric to the inner piece of the baby nest as well to make it longer so this mistake just haunts me. Now fold your fabric piece in half lengthwise just like you did with the first one, right sides facing each other, place the pattern on top and cut it out. And now you should have two pieces of fabric that look like this. Place them one on top of the other, right sides facing each other. I'm just going to turn this the other way around. I thought you can probably see my pins better on the white fabric, but I'm not sure that was the right decision. Pin the two pieces together all the way around the curved edge. Take your measuring tape or a ruler and measure out 8 centimeters from this corner downwards and make a mark right there and on the other side as well. Starting at the mark you just made, sew all the way around your baby nest, so you'll basically sew those two pieces together. Now I recommend you make these tiny cuts along the rounded edges of your fabric. This will ensure that the fabric lies nicely when you turn it right side out. And don't forget to do the same thing along this bigger edge. Now you can turn it right side out and go over to your ironing board. Iron all of the edges to make sure the fabric lies nice and flat. Don't forget to plug in your ironing board like I did here because it won't work. Now take your scissors and clip this edge to make sure you can fold this part of the fabric inwards nicely. So fold both pieces of fabric inwards about half a centimeter and then place your iron on top. This will create a straight, nice and neat edge and you'll want to repeat it on the other side. Then we are going to do the exact same thing on this rounded edge. It is a bit trickier since this part is rounded, but you can do it. You just have to take it slowly. This is our project so far and now it's time to add the bias binding. There were a couple of questions about the bias binding last time so now I'm going to go into further detail and show you exactly how I add it. But before we attach the bias binding you'll have to hem one of its ends like this, fold it inwards twice and sew it using a straight stitch. It doesn't have to be perfect, it's just important that the end doesn't fray. Now I'm going to start attaching the bias binding. Take the edge that you just hemmed and place it right here, right before this rounded corner. Don't worry, this is not science, so if you go a centimeter above or below or even two or three, it doesn't really change the end result. Now place your bias binding in the center, so right on top of the seam that connects the two fabrics together and pin it all the way around along that seam until you reach the other corner and you can stop when both ends of your bias binding are parallel. Don't forget you have to hem the other end of your bias binding as well, so leave about 2 cm extra. Thank you. 
Now you can attach the bias binding to your fabric, sew it along both edges using a straight stitch and don't forget to hem the other side of your bias binding as well. Make sure you don't sew through multiple layers of fabric. Use the opening of your baby nest and place your fabric like this, making sure you don't have anything un underneath it, so no other layers of fabric. If you want your mattress to be removable, you'll have to use some velcro. Cut a piece of velcro that is approximately 15 centimeters. Place one piece like this on the inside of your fabric, so over that folded edge, pin it in place. Do the same thing for the other piece of fabric and the other piece of velcro. Then sew the pieces in place using a zigzag stitch. Now close your velcro and pin along the right and the left side of your velcro. You will notice that there is still an opening left. So pin your edges closed like this. This should be easy since you already ironed them previously. Then sew everything using a straight stitch. Take your wadding piece, fold it in half lengthwise and place the pattern for your mattress on top, pin it and cut it out. I'm going to use the mattress as a guide and I'm going to pin it over my baby nest and sew around it. So I'm not going to sew through the mattress, only around we it. We want to basically create a pocket for the mattress inside. So we're just gonna sew along the edge of this mattress. If you don't want to do that, you can also use an erasable pen or or use lots of pins as a guide. Now take your mattress, place it inside of your baby nest, make sure everything is nice and neat. Take your cotton cord and guide it through the tunnel you created when adding the bias binding. I've used some washi tape to make the end of my cord stiffer and then a safety pin, but it didn't really go as planned. One eternity later, brought my coffee this was such a struggle and now it's time to fill up the sides of your baby nest using pillow stuffing I don't really have a method for this so just stuff it in there until it looks nice After that you can go ahead and sew those opening closed using a straight stitch. It might look impossible but believe me it isn't. And then you're all done basically. If you want to add a mattress I'm going to quickly show you how to do that. So to make the removable mattress, you'll need another piece of cotton fabric. I've used this brick colored cotton. Use the pattern for your mattress to cut out another two pieces of cotton fabric and a piece of wadding. 
sew those two pieces of fabric together along the rounded edge leaving the bottom open place the mattress on the inside you'll probably need to cut off about one or two centimeters of your mattress from the bottom since your mattress and your cover have the same size right now then fold the bottom edges of your cotton fabric inwards about one centimeter sew it closed and your mattress is done if you want to add this quilted effect on your mattress you can head over and watch my first video i've showed exactly how i did it using some simple tricks and you can also find a tutorial on making a cover for the cord stopper if you're worried that the cord is too long or that your baby might play with it you can just cover it and i have a tutorial for the cover as well so this was my baby nest tutorial 2.0 i hope you enjoyed it i hope i explained everything as clear as possible please keep in mind that this is not intended for babies to sleep at night in Please only use this if you are awake and supervising your baby. I personally found it very useful during the day. My baby could sleep on the couch in the baby nest and I was in the kitchen. We have an open space preparing dinner and I could just watch her sleep and it was the best thing ever. But please make your research about seeds, about the sudden infant death syndrome and then make a decision if this is the right product for you or for the person you want to give this to. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.